Trigonometry, what's it good for anyway? Well, in this Mathematica tutorial, I'm going to talk to you about trigonometry and you will see that it is very, very important in mathematics and mathematics is very important to just about everything. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Okay, so what is it all about? It's concerned with relationships between angles and ratios of sides of lengths in triangles and is closely related to the study of circles. Okay, but circles are ubiquitous in mathematics, meaning uh, they appear just about everywhere. When you are calculating an integral, um, when you are dealing with triangles, when you are dealing with um, just numbers even, when you're dealing with statistics, all kinds of things. Okay, so circles are of fundamental importance. One radian is the angle required to create a sector of a circle with an arc length equal to the radius. Well, look, have a look at this picture right here where I've got a circle and I've got it sliced into sections where six of them are of equal area and the seventh is quite a bit smaller. All right, but imagine an equilateral triangle, okay? That is a a triangle in which the three sides have equal length and then you take one of the sides and you bow it out okay so that that bow makes part of a circle where the other side is the radius okay then if you do that well you get just exactly this which is the angle one radian Okay, now there are two pi radians in the entire circle, and two, two pi is uh, 6.28, etc. So that means we should have six of these little pieces of one radian in angle, and then a little bit more to make the full circle. Okay, so uh, yeah. A circle with radius r units has a circumference 2 pi r units around. Okay, that's the distance around. Now, somebody told me that there is a uh, party joke. I guess you, may, you, you sit down in a pub and you make a bet with someone. You get your cup. All right, maybe this is a really bad example because it's not a beer mug. But what you do is you bet someone that the... Um, that the length around this rim is greater than the height of your beer cup all right which in australia this is called a pot or a schooner uh, and sometimes a pint okay but not this one this is a, a coffee mug what i'm referring to is a beer glass all right which you typically have when you're in a pub now uh, they are quite a bit taller so if somebody has had a few beers, then they might be convinced to take you up on that bet. Okay, now why is it a good bet for you? Because this is 2 pi times the radius. Okay, so this is actually uh, quite, quite a long distance around compared to what it might seem when you look at it. Okay, so basically you will be the winner if you make that bet uh, that the circumference of the radius is greater than the height of the beer cup provided you have a standard beer cup like a pot or a schooner okay where were we uh two pi r units okay so the angle created by a complete revolution is equal to two pi radians just as we have this is two pi radians all the way across around and you might know this as 360 degrees Okay, so what we'll look at first is the conversion of radians to degrees. How do you do that? Well, one radian is 180 degrees divided by pi. Okay, so you might think of these as, as units cancelling when you set up your calculation. I'm going to open up Mathematica now because this is a Mathematica tutorial and uh, we're going to talk about calculating such things, okay? All right, so here's my Mathematica notebook, and then over here we should also say that one degree is pi radians divided by 180. 
So let's just say 24 degrees. If we were to convert this to radians, what would it be? Okay, so what do I have to set up? I need a I need to make degrees cancel. Okay, so that's an aid to memory. So I'll put equals equals and I'm writing a comment. Okay, and now I need to get a, a fraction, so I'll open up the basic math assistant palette. And it has appeared, so I'll move it over. Now I want a fraction. Okay, I press the fraction button, now I close this. What I want here is to say, well, 24 degrees is 24 degrees, right? But I want degrees to cancel, so I put degrees down the bottom. And then up the top, I put radians. Okay, now how many uh, radians is one degree? Well, I need pi, pi for pi, and 180 because this is our this is our conversion rate. Okay, so pi radians, 180 degrees in the denominator. Notice how degrees cancel there, so it's set up correctly, all right? And uh, this right here is just, this is just one. Okay, so, so it's all, all good. Okay, now we can simplify this calculation. So I'll copy this and come down to a new line. And I've got degrees canceling. Okay, so I'll get rid of the degrees units. And I'll move the radians over to here. And then I'll put this 24 up in the numerator. Okay, and now all I have to do is simplify this. Okay, so um, I think that 20, 24 goes into 180, but let's check. So I'll open up a math uh, cell. I'll divide 180 in, in by 24. Well, not quite, so it's 15 over 2. Okay, so we can simplify it now and say that we have uh, 15 halves pi radians. Okay, what if you wanted a numerical estimate of that? Well, we can do that too. I'll copy this now and I'll come back down in here into this cell and let's say n for take a numerical estimate, shift enter and we get 23.5619 radians okay so i'll copy that let's say this is this many radians all right and i'll chop it off there to say approximately that okay well that was a comment so i'll turn it into a comment now Okay, and that's how you convert degrees to radians. Now, what about going the other way? What if you wanted to convert radians to degrees? Okay, well, we would use the um, inverse of this, as in that fraction flipped upside down. We'd use that in our conversion. So let's just choose an example. Let's say we want to convert uh, 15 radians to degrees okay so 15 radians is equal to 15 radians but we want something like this but the inverse of that so I'll copy it come down here and I want the pi radians in the denominator and it is set up so that I cancel the uh, radians okay so 180 degrees in the numerator okay good now I can do the simplification of this so let's see we get rid of the radians because they are cancelling okay and then I can represent that as 15 times 180 and that's degrees okay and now I just need to simplify that number all right but I probably want to uh, view this as a numerical answer so I'll just calculate this below shift enter and I get 859 
degrees, okay? And that's perfectly acceptable even though it's greater than 360. So I'll talk to you about that in a moment after I write this out, degrees. Okay, now think about this. If you are going around the circle, starting from the positive end of the x-axis and you're going counterclockwise, you go 360, that takes you back to where you started. Okay, another 360 is 720. That takes you back to where you started. And then you have another, let's see, 139 or so to go around. Okay, so if we want to view this 859.437 degrees in terms of an angle less than 360 degrees, we can do that. But this 859.437, that has a meaning. It means go around two times and then find yourself roughly 139 degrees past that starting place, all right? So what do we do? We want to remove from this two times 360 to get an angle that is less than 360 degrees. And we get 139.44 roughly degrees. Uh, 0.44 degrees. And let's write as an angle less than uh, 360. Okay, and this is also a comment, so let's express it as a comment. Okay, and that's that. Now, uh, how does this have anything to do with triangles? All right, so this is important because this allows you to consider ratios of sides of triangles. Okay, so look at the, the, the image here. So we've got theta, that's a Greek letter. That's usually a Greek letter used uh, when you're referring to angles. All right, so we have three um, fundamental important ratios for triangles. So let's consider the first one, sine. All right, so this is S-I-N-E, and we often abbreviate that with S-I-N. So that is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the ratio of this side over this side as a fraction. Okay, and that is the sine function. Cosine, abbreviated cos, that's adjacent, this one, over hypotenuse. Okay, as a fraction. And finally, tan is the ratio opposite over adjacent. All right, now, notice that if you put sine theta divided by cos theta, well, then you have opposite over hypotenuse over adjacent over hypotenuse, and you can then multiply numerator and denominator by the hypotenuse, and you find that you have opposite over adjacent, which is equal to tan. So we have our first trigonometric identity, that tan of theta is equal to sine theta divided by cos theta. Okay, now, these two triangles are very important because they come up again and again in trigonometric calculations. Okay, so, it's first the triangle with two sides equal to one, or in that ratio, and the hypotenuse having length, the square root of two. Right, now this agrees with Pythagoras' theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, because 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2, and the square root of 2 squared is 2, so those are equal. All right, now this is 45 degrees, which is equal to pi on 4 radians. Okay, the second very important triangle to know about and probably memorize is the triangle of side 1, root 3, and hypotenuse 2. Okay, now you want to, when you, when you think of a problem that involves these triangles, you want to draw the triangle. It's a right triangle, meaning one of the angles is 90 degrees or pi on two radians. 
and the other two have 30 degrees, 60 degrees, and these are pi on 6 and pi on 3 respectively. Okay, so you want to draw your triangle with side 1 and root 3 and 2. Now notice that root 3 is greater than 1 and 2 is greater than root 3. All right, so that tells you where to put the small angle, which is pi on 6, and the larger angle, pi on 3, just by looking at these sides when you draw that. Okay, so let's consider a brief example. So, for example, you could find what sine of pi on 6 radians is, right, because sine is opposite on hypotenuse. So that is 1 on 2, which is a half. Okay, similarly, cosine or cos of pi on 6 radians is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that's root 3 on 2. So you get exact trigonometric ratios in those cases, and uh, it's fairly easy to memorize. and comes up a lot, so it's worthwhile to do so. Okay, the unit circle, also very important in uh, trigonometry. It's a circle of radius 1. Okay, so... Uh, right, so let's go down and look at this, because here is a unit circle. Here's an x-axis, a y-axis, and what we see here is the radius equal to 1, and a parametrization of an x-y point on the circle in terms of theta. Okay, that parameterization is very important. Cos theta, sine theta. Okay, so let's open up Mathematica now and um, do some plotting. All right, so I'll scroll down here and I'll say plot sine of, well, I won't write theta, so I'll just put t. And then I want to plot this. t goes from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, shift enter, and I'll get a plot of sine of t as t increases from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, how does that compare to this picture right here? So let's uh, make this smaller so we can put these in the same window. All right, so what you're seeing here is if you are taking, um, imagine this, this this point here going around clockwise at a constant speed as time progresses. Okay, now what what is the projection onto the y-axis looking like? All right, so you start here at zero, and then what is the y value here? Well, it's just roughly this amount. You keep going, all right? The y value is this amount. Go up here, the maximum y value is 1. Okay, up here. And then it comes down, and, and so on. Okay, so this graph here is the projection of the quantity uh, of, of the y value under the y-axis, okay? I probably didn't say that right, but I hope you understand. So just the the y quantity is going up to start with as time goes on and then it's coming back down and now at zero and then if i keep going with my mouse there now minus one okay so that corresponds to the bottom down here on this all right this corresponds to this all right now i keep going what's the y value doing it's increasing and coming back to zero. And then you repeat, 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 and you get this continuing on. So if we take this to four pi, that would be what it would be like to go around this circle twice. All right, so that is the y value here for sine. You see, it's the, the y value here. So I parameterize this with cos theta, sine theta. All right, that's how you get an arbitrary point x, y on this unit circle. All right, what if I were to do the same with uh, the x value, All right? So that's cos t, so I'll put it in here, cos of t. Okay, shift enter, and I've got them both plotted 
on top of one another now. All right, so if we're doing the same with the x component, projecting this point onto the x-axis, if we start right here on the x-axis, then we start with the point 1, 0. So the x component is 1, but if I go around counterclockwise, what happens is the x component is decreasing, just like what you see here. Oh, sorry, in blue, what you see here in blue, you start with 1, you go down here to 0. This point here corresponds to uh, the top of this circle right here. All right, and if we continue on, projecting onto the x-axis, okay, now x is equal to minus 1, and that corresponds to the bottom of this blue curve right here. Okay, and then, uh, and so on and so on, and that's how we get the graph of the cos function. Okay, let's continue, scroll down in this booklet. Uh, this is what I was describing just now, I think. Okay, next, we have a rule, which I like to think of as all stations to central. All right, now what does that refer to? That refers to where various trigonom trigonometric ratios are positive. Let's see if I have, yes, there's a picture of this. Okay, so in the first quadrant, which is this one, all are positive. In other words, sine of theta, cos of theta, and tan of theta, they're all positive uh, ratios. And another example would be, so if we would take um, sine of pi on 3, well, that's going to be positive. Okay, what about cos of pi on 3? That's going to be positive. Why? Because that angle is in the first quadrant right here, starting from the positive end of the x-axis going counterclockwise. Okay, uh, pi on 3 plus pi on 2 that is, uh, I think, 5 pi on 6. Anyway, it should be somewhere in the second quadrant. That angle, 5 pi on 6. Well, sine of 5 pi on 6 is positive, but cosine, or cos of 5 pi on 6, is negative, and tan of 5 pi on 6 is negative. Let's check this with Mathematica. Okay, so let's say sine of... 5 pi over 6. 1 half, that's positive. Okay, what about cosine? Cos. Negative, it's minus root 3 on 2. Okay, likewise tan of this should be negative because this angle is in the second quadrant. Okay, so this tells us uh, how to do that. All sine, tan, cos, all right? And if you need an aid to memory, you can think of this as all stations to central to help you with that acronym, all, sine, tan, and cos. Okay. Now, let's go into more detail with this angle, right? How do we work out this trigonometric ratio right here? So let's do cos, because perhaps that's a bit more simple. A okay, cos of 5 pi on 6. Well, how would we by hand work this out? Okay, so what you would want to do is find out where this angle is. Okay, so 5 pi on 6. All right, now if I subtract pi on 2, I get pi on 3. So what that says is that we have an angle of pi on 3 past beyond the the y-axis there. So looking at this right here, so if I go counterclockwise pi on 2 radians, I end up there at the y-axis. Right, so if I go up further pi on 3, I end up at 5 pi on 6 radians, all right? Now, this pi on 3 well, that's 60 degrees, right? So, uh, so that's roughly somewhere in here. 
like this. Okay, now I need to think of what is the angle that I make with the x-axis. Well, the angle of this uh, triangle I'm making from this end of the x-axis to my dotted line that I put in here at pi on 3 from the y-axis, well, that is pi on 6 radians from, from this x-axis up. Okay, so what I need to do is sketch a triangle uh, that is suitable to work with there with its base on the x-axis. Okay, and that triangle has an angle of pi on 6 radians from the x-axis. Sorry, I need to do this the other way, right? Yeah, the x-axis up to this position. Okay, so given that that's uh, pi on 6, and I know that that's going to be negative because cos is negative in this quadrant. So then I go back and think about this special triangle, which was up here, this one. Okay, and I'm thinking of the cosine of pi on 6, right, which is root 3 on 2. Right now, I, I know that that's root 3 on 2, but I also know that it should be negative. Okay, so that tells me that it should actually be minus root 3 on 2. And that's how I get that by hand, all right? And Mathematica agrees that that is root, uh, minus root 3 on 2. Okay, so you see that uh, these triangles are very important because they allow you to work out all kinds of trigonometric ratios uh, for angles that are not between 0 and pi on 2. Okay. Right, what we have here are some more plots of uh, sine and cos. So this one is sine, this one over here is cos, and then uh, this is a plot of tan. All right, now you see tan has some vertical asymptotes right here at pi on 2 and minus pi on 2 and and pi uh, sorry 3 pi on 2 and so on okay so that's just about all I have for you on basic uh, trigonometry and I'll see you next time thanks for watching